Ivan, a very good morning and thanks so much for your time. So it's understood that 82% of the federal executive members voted in favor of this happening, but you still have some concerns, especially from two of the candidates, uh, namely Mbali and Tuli and John Moody, who are opposed to this virtual conference. They worry that it might disadvantage those who don't have access to technology. Well, the Democratic Alliance Federal Council this weekend, as you rightly pointed out, overwhelmingly voted in favor to have a virtual federal congress on the 31st of October and the 1st of November. And what we will do at the federal congress is to consider our constitutional amendments. We will consider the organizational report, the financial report, and very importantly, policy resolutions and elect leadership. Yes, we did discuss Given the challenging times that we live in COVID-19 and as well as with load shedding, we have listed a number of major risks to this particular uh, virtual Congress. And we have presented yesterday a risk mitigation strategy from issues of load shedding to lack of ICT equipment, poor or no connectivity, uh, people not having data, delegates not having emails, we have extensively exhausted all these risks, and for every single risk, we have made ample provision to be accommodating to everybody across South Africa, and we will continue now with an extensive additional audit to determine the other types of risk in terms of the areas. We will also, at the various venues, various delegates, we, uh, do an order to determine what are the other issues that is still of concern, and we will certainly address those in addition. Given that we are now operating in COVID-19, we have also adopted to have a hybrid system. And in addition, we will comply with a standard operating procedure in terms of uh, the hybrid system. Some will be voting online. Others will be taking part in a face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, interaction at some venues. And at every venue, we will uh, comply with COVID-19 regulations. So the Federal Council is uh, very happy that we are able and have the technical capabilities and we've taken care of all the risk and therefore have made the decision that we must proceed. For me, right. important. So, so Ivan, so, so you're saying that, that everybody, should, everybody should be able to, to consult the way they, they normally would to have meetings and, and discuss issues the way they would and vote. Everybody should, uh, according to your plan? Everybody that is eligible in terms of the Constitution mm. will be able to attend the Congress and will be able to vote for these particular matters that I've uh, outlined. For me, it is important because we have considered this federal Congress uh, to comply with the following principles. Firstly, democratic accountability. Secondly, to have regular internal elections is very central to democracy. Thirdly, fundamentally inclusiveness and participation of all the delegates across the country. And we are now adapting to the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution. We make provision for a hybrid system because we understand with load shedding and there might be some challenges. And therefore, we have a hybrid system allowing some people to vote on the platform and others we may have some challenges. We have to be honest, there will be some challenges in this uh, digital world. And therefore, we have made ample provision even uh, supplying people with data, uh, mm. technology, equipment. So this Congress will be the first Congress on a virtual platform. It's groundbreaking work, and we're all excited that the Federal Council has unanimously mm. resolved to proceed. Yeah. inclusiveness and participation. Ivan, there's, there's also some concern about uh, the build-up to the Congress. There's some concerns about branch meetings that, uh, that need to be held and concern about putting people at risk, even though you say, yes, you will adhere to, you know, to all the rules and regulations. But uh, there, there's also some concern from, from those candidates uh, about the build-up and, and, and what needs to happen. Obviously, we have uh, currently busy right now with the holding of the various annual general meetings. Uh, we have also decided uh, for the annual general meetings not to have a full annual general meetings of our branches, but to uh, just simply go in and have an election of the uh, branch executives as well as nominating uh, people to serve on higher structures like regional structures, uh, congresses, uh, provincial congress and the federal congress. Mm. So we've made ample provision 
inclusivity and participation at branch level. Well, Ivan, does this not kind of open the way or open the door maybe for these candidates to dispute results because of the way this is being done with the concerns that they've raised? Is that not a worry for you? Now, we have also decided yesterday that we need to look at uh, auditing. Uh, they, our congresses always allow for participants or candidates who stand in the election to have some uh, party agents uh, as observers to the Congress, also to do a proper order and even get some external uh, people to also oversee uh, the federal Congress in the results. I think there is certainly, in my mind, absolute no doubt that this will be a very fair and free election. All right, thanks very much for that. The DA is uh, Ivan Mayer there, just on their virtual Congress to be held at the end of October. Let's see how that will work.